Hey everyone, it's your favorite host. I know you guys are enjoying today. Today has been an eventful day. I hope it's been eventful for you as well. I am so excited to bring this incredible, incredible author to the stage. This woman is profound. Very prolific author, writer, real estate entrepreneur. She has inspired so many, including me today on the Gentleman Style Podcast. So, and we're going to dive into just this small world, of, this piece of her world in her book, Mint. And I'm looking forward to introducing you to her world. If this is your first time being introduced to this incredible spoken author, stay tuned, stay with us. You won't want to miss one second of this powerhouse speaker that I'm about to bring to the stage. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to the Gentleman Style Podcast show. And today I have the incredible, amazing Miss Teresa A. Swift. This woman is prolific in her work. She's written numerous works, but this work is capturing the hearts of many across the board, across the United States and mine today on the Gentleman Style Podcast show. We're going to dive into this book, Mint, coming to the stage. This book, you have to get your copy of this book. Uh, she is coming all the way from Washington, D.C. to join us today on the Gentleman Style Podcast stage. Her and her husband, Mr. Swift. She is a mother, grandmother, author. She, she has written several books and her writing career after working for 20 years, get this, in the mortgage industry. That's a huge transition right there. That is something completely unexpected, but necessary. This woman is necessary. And we are going to dive into her creative works today. She has published several children's books as well and a novel. She's also the co-founder of Need Change Now, a nonprofit organization that addresses global warming and, effect, and the effects it causes on low to moderate income and minority communities. Did I mention she has a heart of gold? Heart of pure gold. So help me welcome to the stage, Miss Teresa Swift. Welcome, welcome, Miss Swift, to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. We love you, sister. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Norman. It is my pleasure to be here with you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to host you on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. You look fantastic, Queen. Thank you. Thank you. I love the blue on you. It is, it is definitely, definitely your color. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Miss Teresa, you have done an incredible job and your, your career and your, your wisdom, you could, you have an incredible mind. You could do anything you set your mind to. When did you first get the bug for writing books and children's books? When did that first occur to you? Okay. Um, before I answer that question, Mr. Norman, I just want to thank you for inviting me um, on your program. I am so excited uh, and I cannot wait until we dig into this project. But to answer your question, as a little girl, I've always been a storyteller. Um, my brother and sisters and neighbors, they would get me and say, tell us a story. And what I would do, I would sit them on the ground and I would stand up and they would just sit there in awe. They wouldn't move. And I would just make up a story. And once the story was finished, they would say, tell us another one. And I would tell them, tomorrow. <laughs> I'll try again tomorrow. So, but to answer your question, in 2001, I really got serious about writing. And I started working on a novel. But because I had such a demanding job in the mortgage industry, as you mentioned in your introduction, I put my writing on the back burner. But in 2009, I took it serious. And that's when I wrote my first children's book and got it published 
I started my own publishing company, my husband and I, called Fun Text Publishing. And under that publishing company, I published five books. But I knew in order for people to take me serious as an author, I had to get in front of someone who could see my work and, not, and me not having to self-publish my own work. And so now I have the opportunity to do that. Mint has given me that opportunity where people can read my book and say, wow, this woman really can write. So I'm excited about that. And that's when I first got my first serious, um, like you said, bug in 2001. But here we are 21 years later and my dreams are finally coming true. I love that. I love that. I, I told y'all a true heart of gold. Miss Teresa, this by far, this book, I could not put it down. I could not put, I mean, it became, it, it became a part of me. It was like attached to my hip. Look at this cover, y'all. If y'all can see this cover, it is a true masterpiece. The eyes, the butterflies, it just captures the imagination. Miss Teresa, what inspired, tell me, what inspired just this cover? Um, what does this cover represent? It, it represents several things, and you will not know until you guys get the book. But what is this? What inspired this cover for you? Well, when I decided to, when, when I was thinking about doing the cover, I wanted to start off with a younger Mint, although she's 110 years old and she's telling her story. But I wanted to start her off at a younger age when she was born on the plantation. So what I did, I had that, and this is for your viewers only. That is a picture of my granddaughter at the age of five. She will be turning seven on July 24th. So what they did, they took her picture and they drew her, they aged her and they drew her and put her on the cover. Now, when I first got that cover, there was not a picture of a butterfly. So I went back to the illustrator. I said, you must put a butterfly on this book because people who have read the book, they know the significance of that orange butterfly. So that is the story behind the cover. That is my granddaughter. Oh my. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How did you come up with the name Mint? What inspired this book, particular book? Because you've written several. You've, you've, you're an author. You are a known author. And, and, and what inspired Mint specifically? I wanted a title that was easy to remember. I wanted a title that uh, when people, when you, like now, when somebody say Mint, I wanted them to directly go to that picture of what you just said, the beautiful cover and the butterfly. Mint, there's a significance of that, um, of her name. And you learn that in the book while reading the book. I don't want to give it away, but read the book and you will find out how she got that name meant. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Hey, Daisha, how you doing, girl? A <laughs> girl, I owe you lunch, dinner, whatever. <laughs> Thank you for this incredible author. Oh my gosh. You guys have to check this out. This book is the book to get. If you do nothing else this year, if you, if you forget anything else I said this entire episode, get this book, Mint, by Teresa A. Swift today. It is a page turner, and you won't be able to put it down. Not for a second, not for a minute. Again, this book became attached to my hip. We have one quick commercial break. You guys stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level. Duke Duchess, which is our season level and the Emperor and Empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, and interviews, as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support 
helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. We are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast show. We have the incredible, the lovely, amazing Teresa Swift on the Gentleman Style Podcast show. And we are doing a deep dive book review with the author. How many times do you get to do that? Speak with the legend, the author themselves. Oh, my God. You guys see me dancing with a book? This is, I love this book. Mint has become. That's the, the great name that she just broke down. If you missed that, if you missed what she just broke down, go back, scroll back, and check her out. Mint, I have absolutely fallen in love with Mint. Is that Was that your intention, Miss? Was that your intention for people to fall in love with Mint and, and, and the, the, her story? You take us on this journey, this romantic journey between past and present throughout the book. What was your intention? Because I'm telling you mine. That that I love this. And I love the, the, the romanticism in it, the experience of it. I felt I was right there. I was right with her. What was your intention with writing Mint and, and writing the book? Well, one thing, uh, Mr. Norman, my, my writing style, you know, I'm a cinematic writer. So when I paint a picture, when I see a picture in my head, I want my readers to be able to see that same picture when they read my words. So with Mint, um, I, I just wanted people to fall in love with her because everybody knows a Mint. You know, I, you know, I know a Mint um, and her character like you said, you're either going to love her or you're going to hate her because I did not hold back. I did not hold back her mouth. Her mouth, she, you know, her grandson, sometimes he, all he, all he does is just shake his head and say, Ooh, let me go get a drink. Um, because her <laughs> stories that she's telling him, you know, and sometimes they are not easy to read. And I wrote it that way. I wrote the book that way because you got to remember as the author, we control the pen. So I wrote the story so that people wouldn't want to put it down from chapter to chapter. I wrote it so and I always left it as a, a cliffhanger. So you would turn to the next chapter to see what he's going to talk about, what story she's going to reveal next. So it sounds like I did my job. It sounds like the people are really drawn in because the reviews that people are leaving on Amazon, they're saying the same exact thing. They could not put the book down. And also, as for me, as the author, you know, sometimes I'll go back and I'll read Mint. I'll pick her up and I'll go through a chapter and, I, and I'll put it down. And I'll be like, wow, did you just write, did you write that chapter? Did you tell that story? And it, it, it just feels good. It just, it, it, it felt like this was her story and it was coming through me to tell her story. That is the most important thing and the most positive thing about this book because I felt her presence. And I know people would say, well, how did you feel the presence? Because she was in my heart and I just pulled her out of my heart and I wrote what was there. And that's why we came up with this wonderful story. And I'm not saying it's a wonderful story because I wrote it. It's a wonderful story because I read the book. So I want to share something with you guys. Um, this is profound, and it, and I'm not I'm not and I'm not just romancing you guys here because I'm making this up. I want to share something with you all, um, with the audience that's that's viewing um, this book. I'm going to share how how serious this book is because I think you guys, a lot of people talk a lot of junk, right? A lot of people say a lot of different things, but and and very rarely ever mean it. I'm going to share with you the screen of this Amazon page. And so what you're looking at here, this is the book. This is where you can get a copy. It's also on Barnes and Nobles and several other locations. But this right here, this is 55 solid reviews, 55 five-star reviews on this book. And as you can see, this book has you know, on paperback has been published not very long ago. And so 
55 solid reviews. Not four star, not three star, not two star, not one star. This is a solid five star book. And that's very, that's not common. And that's not done very often. So when, so when I'm sitting on this stage and I'm sitting here with the author herself telling you this is the book to read, <laughs> I'm telling you and 55 other people agree with me that <laughs> this is the book to read. And if you haven't got your copy yet, if you if you if you haven't tuned out, don't tune out. <laughs> but after you tune off of here, go get your copy of this book because it is that serious. And we need to uplift this queen. We need to uplift what what this story is about and what she's doing because she is a movement. The train has left the station, y'all. Clearly, the train has <laughs> left the station, but it's not too late to get on board. No. And you touched on something very hard and and you 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 struck a chord with me you talk about slavery in the book mm -hmm. um and you you take us through the time the, through the experiences of that right I, I, I just can you touch on why why slavery the imagination because just like you said you held nothing back in this book grandma meant <laughs> slavery you you were very raw in this book can i say that you were yeah. you were alive in this book Mm -hmm. And so what was that like? What was that like writing that book, um, writing those ch specific chapters in those books? Well, listen, Norman, um, <laughs> it's amazing that you, you, you're you saying that because you guys have the watered down version. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was deeper than that. They had me pulled back because, um, as we know, slavery is part of our history and we can never erase it. And I just want people to know, although this book is a fictional book, slavery honestly happened. And, you know, I am sitting back now and watching this time period, 2022, and they're trying to whitewash or erase our history. So I wanted to tell a different story. I wanted to tell it through, a, through the eyes of a former slave who was given certain opportunities that slaves didn't get the opportunities to get, to have, such as learning to read, write, count money, do basic math. And um, so that's why I birthed it. I wanted a different slave narrative. Yes, there are some hard parts in the book to read. And I always tell people, just get through the book. I know there's, and I wrote it that way. I wrote it that way because, like I said, I own the pen. But just get through the book and you will see the beauty of the story. It is an amazing story. The, it has never been told before. And there's a lot of suspense. A lot of suspense. You want to see things in a book, you're going to be like, wow, I didn't see that coming. And then there's going to be parts in a book, and I hate to say it, but you may shed a tear. You may you want to laugh. I know that I laugh as the author. You're going to laugh. And then you're gonna think the book is real. Let me share this with, with you and your viewers. There's a part in the book, and I don't wanna tell you what, it, what it's about because I don't wanna give anything away. But after my husband read the book, he came to me, he said, honey, when did that happen to our people? And I said, when did what happen to our people? And he told me what he was talking about. And I looked at him because I was walking. We was in the kitchen. I was walking. And I stopped. And I said, honey, that never happened. I made it up. And he said, wow, you did a phenomenal job. Because people really think this is a true story because of some of the historical history that I put into the book. But it's not a true story. But let me say this. My publicist, I said this to him a couple of weeks ago. I said, Barry. I said, when people read this book, they automatically think Sarah Mae Robinson is a true story, but it's a fictional. And he said, Teresa, Sarah Mae Robinson is a fictional character, but there were thousands of Sarah Mae Robinsons. Mm. She just broke my heart. So what you guys don't see is I'm shedding a tear because I actually wanted to meet I wanted to meet them. Like when I was reading the book, it's like I want to meet her. Like again, the 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 character, the main character in this book, 
I wanted to meet her because she she takes you with her. And I'm not going to say publicly because we're live and we're on television, but I was this close to shedding a tear. I'm not going to say whether or not I cried or not, but I was this close to shedding a tear because she takes you with her you, when she's sitting on that 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 stump when she's when she's sitting on the the stairs on the porch eating a bowl of grits you can almost smell it you can taste it with her you this is how detailed uh miss swift goes with the book you can you can smell the grits you can when she's running through the forest you can you're with her and you're smelling the flowers and the butterflies and they're it's all hitting your face and you're there with her because she's that good but she takes her craft very seriously this is not a game to her you can see it throughout her work her masterpiece here um this is huge this is phenomenal y'all miss swift I, I have to ask how long did it take for you to write mint how long did that process take it took me three months to do research because like you said i didn't have a chance to sit down with a former slave they sir may robinson so I did three months of research. And after I did my three months of research, because you have to remember, I went back to the mid 1800s. So when you're talking about the 1800s, you have to make sure your timeline lines up. I couldn't have her walk in a room and turn on a light switch. So I did three months of research. When I say research, I studied the Civil War, which I knew a lot of things because I'm a, I'm a history person. I've always been. History was one of my favorite subjects in school history and current events. But I had to stay true to that time period. So after I did my three months of research, I um, I sat down and I wrote the book in six months. But my family will tell you, when I'm writing, I cut everybody off. And I just sit there and I just let the story pour out of me. So for three, um, six months, I wrote the book. And then you have to go through the, the process, the editing process. And that's a process. People don't understand. It's a process because it's like a tennis match. You back and forth, you back and forth. You, you know, you, your editor will get it and they send it back to you. But at the end of the day, the author has the final, um, has this final say. So six months is how long it really took me to get the story out of my head. And about another six months to go through the editing, the editing process. Y'all see that attention to detail? That's huge, right? That's not easy. This isn't some last minute book that was just spit out. This was real detail. We have a question from the audience. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to bring it up to the stage. Who should read the book? What ages is this book age appropriate for? I'll let the author answer that question. I will say young adults on because of unless... Um, you really sit down with your children because there's some language in there, you know, and, and let me share this <laughs> again. I'm going to speak of Barry. I told you guys got the watered down version. So Barry always tells me, he said, Teresa, all you did was take an X rated book and turn it into a rated R book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would say 17 and above because like you said, I put a lot of details in the book and the, some of the kids may not be able to get through some of the stuff that I'm writing. And then there's, you know, there's some sexual stuff in the book and there's some things, you know, like I said, I don't want to get too much away, but let's stay at, at rated R 17 and above. Let's, let's keep that. Fair. But it's good to talk to your children about our history it's very good to talk and you know i wouldn't tell no one not to sit down and talk and maybe they can read the book and and, and tell the stories in a different way yeah. than grand met because some of those stories are truly amazing that she was telling her grandson and when i read <laughs> when i wrote these stories because you know when i write one story and i said okay she got to tell another story so i got to tell a story that was better than the one i just wrote so how do I tell another story that's better than the one? And it just kept coming. And I just kept writing. And I, it, 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 it all came together at the end. So I'm very proud of this project. It is really, really amazing that I'm getting this love. And, you know, doors are opening for me. And again, thank you. We love you, sister. Round of applause for Miss Swift.
Ain't she amazing, y'all? Ain't she lovely? This is this is huge. We have one more quick commercial break. We gotta pay some bills, y'all, or they're gonna shut us down. We gotta pay some bills today. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right, right back. Stay tuned. If you're looking for a reliable, professional trucking and logistics service, you've come to the right place. Musa Trucking is a veteran-owned and operated premier transportation provider that can help with all of your trucking and logistics needs. Musa is revolutionizing the trucking industry through strategic partnerships, the development of core personnel, and the use of cutting-edge technology. Our inventory system ensures that cargo ends up divided into the right trucks and reaching the correct destination. Our drivers are dedicated to transporting goods efficiently and safely. Contact us today to get started by visiting the website on the screen or by calling 757-756-5246. We are back. We have the incredible Teresa A. Swift, author, entrepreneur, real estate broker, (laughs) real estate mortgage specialist, forgive me, real estate mortgage specialist, and just a heart of pure gold. We have been deep diving her book, her newest book. She has several, several children's books and novel, um, Mint. We have been deep diving. If you missed any of this, scroll back, go back and check what this book is all about. Um, we are on iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes, Spotify, Audible, LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook business page, and anywhere you get your podcast today. Uh, Miss Swift, what's in store? Is there going to be a Mint 2? <coughs> uh, Mr. Norman, uh, yes. I have also written a Mint 2, and it it is completed. It has been through the development stage. <laughs> And you know what's so funny? Funny. When I finished writing Mint 2, because what happened when I wrote Mint 1, a couple of people said to me, you should write a Mint 2. And I said, well, how do I write a Mint 2? This woman just turned 111 years old. <laughs> and uh, But I said, you know what? I'm a creative person. Let me just try to think about what I can pull out of Mint 2. So I wrote Mint 2 in six months. And when I wrote, when I wrote Mint 2, in six months, um, when I turned it over to Mallory to make sure the story was fully developed before I started the editing process, she sent me an email and she she said, and I'm and I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase what she said. She said, Teresa, I am so proud of you. She said, your meant too did not leave, lose one iota of that powerful punch that meant to one receive and she said there better be a mint three so i've started mint three i'm on a second chapter of mint three that was for me y'all that was absolutely for me i was being selfish i was looking out for me i'm sorry y'all i love you guys but i had to ask the question and because i got my copy already so you all in order to know why i want a mint two, and now here you have it live there's gonna be a mint three already in the works but it, it, that's profound i can't wait i'm gonna stay connected to this young woman and 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 really dive into her i'm she got a fan for life M- miss miss swift what is what's <laughs> What is in store for us? What's what's the what's the end goal? What's the what any words or advice um that you would love to give to that young boy, that young mint, <laughs> that young mint out in the audience? Any nuggets that you would leave for her? Because this book inspired me in so many different ways, in more ways than one. And I, I made a goal this year. I'm gonna share this about me. I made a goal this year to read more books that were we're focused around the, the strength and the beauty and the power of our women. Mm-hmm. And so this is my fifth book of the year, starting January. Um, what What is it that you would give to that young girl in the audience, that young mint in the audience that you want to leave her with, whose back is against the wall. She's feeling like the world is against her and she, she doesn't know what she really wants to do. Mint 
will give any little girl or a woman hope and never let go of your dream. You know, there's a part in the book that <clears throat> met, <clears throat> she's dreaming of becoming a free woman and what she wanted to do with her life after she became a free woman. And she held on to that dream. She never gave up until she reached her dream. There's somebody listening to me right now that has a dream. And, and, and they are saying to themselves, I don't think I'll make it. But I am a living witness that you will make it. And met, read her story. There's a lot of things this little girl and a woman and woman, this free woman went through. But she never gave up on her dream. And <clears throat> I don't want to say what her dreams are because you have to read the book. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to give too much away. But this is my dream becoming a well-known author. So I'm living my dream because I want Mint to be um, a household name. I want, even if they don't know my name, Teresa A. Swift, when they said Mint, they can go back to the story. They automatically think of the butterflies. They think of her life on the plantation. They think of all the things that she did. So I will tell any Anybody listening, hold on to your dreams because if they take your dreams away, they took you away because your dreams, you were born with your dreams. We all have different dreams. We all were born with different dreams. Don't let nobody took your dreams away. And that's what I want to do. <laughs> Mic drop, mic. That, I, I want to give her this mic, y'all, so she could just throw it across the room. Not drop. I want her to throw it across the room. That's how. Ooh, I was not expecting that. Was not rehearsed, y'all. We have a question, Miss Swift. Um, if you have time, we have a question from a VIP sponsor of the show, Miss Nikki Brown. She asks a question. I absolutely love that you are living your childhood dream of being an author, storyteller. Once you completed the book, how did you go about finding a publisher? Okay, let me let me share this story. And I hope my cousin is listening. Um, I had a cousin read my book and because um, I wanted her to do the synopsis for me. I was going to self-publish because I've done, I self-published the rest of my, my books. Um, and after she read the book, she said, <clears throat> she came to me. She said, how are you going to publish this book? I said, I'm going to self-publish because that's what I knew. And she said, oh, no, 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 no. This book is too good to self-publish. So she said, let me look in my roller decks and see what I can pull out. And she reached out to a friend who had already published the book. And he gave her information to reach out to this, this young, this man. And we set up a Zoom meeting and he said, get, he, he told us during the Zoom and he, he said, send me the first three chapters of the book. And we both said at the same time, oh, no, 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 no. You have to read the whole book because this is not a book that you can just read the first three chapters. You have to re read from cover to cover. So he said, OK, so we sent the book to him. He said, give me a couple of months to read it. Now, during this process, they were either going to come back and say yes or no. Either they're going to love your work or they're going to say, this work is not for me. When he read it, he came back to me. This is what he said. This is a very good novel, but I can help you turn it into an excellent novel and yet help you get it published. And then I put all my eggs in his basket. I said, go for it. whatever you asked me to do. Now, some things he asked me to do that I was, I didn't want to do, but I have to listen to the expert. So first, your work has to be worthy. Because even if my cousin opened that door for me, they didn't like my work. They would have said, it was nice meeting you, Mrs. Swift, but this project is not for me. So you have to look to see which publisher publish what types of books. Every publisher doesn't publish everything. So reach out to your uh, small, small publishing houses. This is what I always tell people. 
don't go for the big publishing houses because a lot of them, they won't even look at your work if you haven't made a name for yourself. You'll be surprised at the small publisher houses that's looking for great books. This publisher that I originally um, signed a contract with, he was a very small publishing house, but he sold his company to a larger publisher house. So now my book can go around the world. Before it couldn't go around the world, but now it can go around the world. So start small. So start with a small publishing house and you'll be surprised what you'll get. That's huge. That is huge. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I felt I felt I hope that answered your question, Ms. Brown. Um uh, that that woo, I feel inspired. Amen. Amen. May the church say amen. I love that. I love that. Miss Swift, I'm gonna ask a question that we've all been been dying for. If you haven't um missed that or gotten that. What, 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 where can we get a copy? Where can we get our hands on this book? This great work of art. I call it a masterpiece, y'all. Where can oh. we get our hands on this, this work of art? Oh, every, you know, Mr. Norman, every time he says that, my heart just go boop, 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 because, um, you know, that word masterpiece, you know, I, I think when I think of masterpiece, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, somebody like Vincent Van Gogh who painted masterpiece, you know. So thank you for using that adjective because that adjective really makes me want to, you know, jump out of my chair. But you can go to um, uh, Amazon, of course. You go to Amazon, you can go to Barnes & Noble uh, website, Goodreads, um, Book Depository, and Discover Books. Those are the platforms that you can get meant. <clears throat> How, and how can we connect with you? How can my audience grow with you? How can we learn more and jump on this roller coaster with you? Well, I'm ready for everybody to take this ride with me because the train just started. You know, we we officially came out with Mint February the 9th. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the 11th. Um, and that's why it's really, um, when I see the reviews, because like I said, we haven't been out um, too much yet. So it's really making me feel good. And Hopefully we're working on getting a hard copy because right now we have the ebook, the paperback, hard copy should be coming out very soon. And then the last piece will be the audio book. So it's, but it's stages. So we're doing everything in stages because we want everything to be perfect. But um, please follow me. Um, you can um, go to my website. It is www.mintbyteresa.com. And dot com and Teresa spelled T E R E S A. And my social media platforms Instagram, Facebook, Twitter is <clears throat> also meant by Teresa. So just type in meant by Teresa and you can you can load you can find me. My, my husband made it very easy for everybody. Meant by Teresa. That's all you need to know. And do not put an H in my name. Because my name is spelled without the H. So as long as you put in meant by Teresa without the H, you'll be able to find me on any platform. Love it. Love it. Love it. I want to say this to you publicly, Queen. Don't ever give up. We need you. We need what you're doing. We need the incredible works that you are putting out. And we need this. We need Mint. And we need you to continue. So I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever, ever quit you are a true inspiration to us all and you are ahead many many years of of of, our, of my generation our generation everyone's generation we need this so never quit please thank you i i don't intend to i'm going to take mint as far as i can take her we don't know it may be a four five six uh, but I told my husband as soon as the, the book is not as strong and doesn't give that deliver that punch, that's when I would kill it all. But right now we do at least have three. And I really think there's going to be a four. But I don't want to spoil anything because I want you to have me back on your show. So I don't want to spoil anything. Love it. Love it. Love it. Connect, 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 y'all. Connect with this. And this, subscribe. And, and follow sub me. Yes. And subscribe and follow. Please. Please, we must uplift this woman and what she's doing. She's on a movement. And like I said earlier, the train has left the station, but it's not too late to get on board. So 
I, we got to let this queen. She has a book. We, she has part two to finish up. Part three, forgive me. Part three to finish up. But thank you, Miss Teresa. Thank you, Miss Swift. You are phenomenal. And you are everything we need in today's society. Love you, sister. Don't ever quit again. Thank you. Absolutely. I hope this helps. I hope this helps you. And I hope and I thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to be here on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this message was helpful. And I hope you guys do feel inspired to get this book because it is worth every page, every penny. You need it. You need it. You got to love. I fell in love with Mint and you will too. And so like I always end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your families, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast, your favorite podcast, and the incredible, the amazing, the super fragilistic, Esviala Docious, Miss Teresa A. Swift, signing off. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.